As commanded by God in the Qur'an, I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God, the merciful, compassionate one, in this verse. Praise be to God, the Lord of every world and dimension, the merciful, compassionate one, master of the day of resurrection. It is him we worship, and from him we seek aid. Lord, grant us the straight path of the righteous, those who your mercy has saved. Those who incur not your anger and avoid your wrath, those who stay well clear of the ignorant path. Chapter 78, The Great News I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. See you now what the Quraysh talk about, the momentous and glorious Qur'an. See how some know that it will bring them good, but some think it will bring them harm. But they will come to know indeed that these rejections will be a source of regret. Do they not consider the grand imposing mountains? and the cradling earth in which they are set. Do you not have sleep to rest your bodies, and the covered nights to do so therein, and the day filled with light to see and give you energy, to work and sustenance bring? Did we not make the heavens above, and the sun as a lamp so bright, and instruct the clouds to give invaluable rain, needed by every plant and garden in sight? So note my favours, appreciate, and believe before your lives are done, before the trumpet of the day, when mankind raised from the graves will come. When the heavens are opened and the mountains vanish, and for doubters hell is ready and waiting, a lengthy sentence with only scolding drinks, their recompense for mocking the reckoning. This is the home for those who rejected our messages as lies, and all they said was recorded, and when they ask for relief they'll have none from us, they'll simply be given more torment. But those who believed in our messages will have the greatest recompense, unblemished gardens, virtuous companions, and hear only honest, clean talk filled with sense. The people of heaven will all be the same age forevermore, never growing older than thirty-three, and have all they wish to eat and drink, and can feast themselves endlessly. What a supreme end for them, the most fitting and greatest reward from the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and all between, the truly merciful Lord. Beware the day when none on another's behalf will be able to plead, except for those who God gives permission and wills for them to attempt to intercede. This is the time Gabriel will be seen, standing with the angels in rows. That will be the day of truth, and this warning will be sufficient for those who know. Those who wish to take the straight path will find it truly offers God's protection, but those who stray and do not heed the warnings will suffer from God's rejection. So beware, disbelievers, of the coming day, where for success, belief and good deeds are a must. The day the regretful ones will cry out and say, I wish I were dust. Chapter 79. The Takers of Souls I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. I swear by the angels gliding from heaven, and the angels that drag the disbelievers' souls after death, and by the angels who take believing souls in a painless manner that is best, and by the other angels who after judgment rush the souls to heaven or hell, and by the archangels who follow my commands, Israfil, Michael, Israel, and Gabriel. On the day the trumpet is blown, the earth will shake and the second blow will follow and the disbelievers' hearts will tremble and their eyes will be filled with sorrow. Ibn al-Harith doubts the resurrection, saying, After our death will we return to life again, even though our bones will have all withered to dust? Such talk is clearly insane. But they don't realise that at the trumpet's blast they will completely reform. This is just as easy as it was for God to create them the first time they were born. Muhammad, we reveal to you now the story of Moses. We called to him in Tua, the sacred valley, and said, Go to the disbelieving Pharaoh of Egypt. His arrogance and pride have led him away from me. So Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Do you wish to redeem yourself and remove all your sin? Allow me to guide you to be in awe of your Lord and leave this arrogant state that you are in. And Moses showed him God's miracles, 
His hand became white and his staff became a snake. But Pharaoh ignored the signs he'd seen and gave up the chance of accepting faith. He gathered his people from all his land and resumed his arrogance. He thought himself best, saying, I am your true supreme Lord. So God condemned him in this life and the next. And in revealing these events to you, Muhammad, there is truly much to learn. So tell the people to heed such warnings and to believe and make striving for the next life a sincere concern. And ask the disbelievers to consider, which do they think was the tougher creation? Simple mankind or the high and mighty sky with all its stars and constellations? Do they consider how it blends tonight and then blends back today? Or the earth's shape and size, vast bodies of water, its animals and varied terrain? So now you've been given lessons and warning, wait for the overwhelming event, marked by the second blow of the trumpet, 40 years after the first is sent. Then Ibn al-Harith and such others will know what they did in their disbelief. Hell will be seen by them who followed their wayward desires, a fire that gives no relief. But those who held their Lord in mind and restrained themselves against base desires, they will have the paradise, the best of returns, and of which there is no reward higher. And of the day, the disbelievers ask you, tell us when it will come, but you can't. You were only sent to warn. You do not know that information. Knowledge of the day belongs to God, but the day will be arriving soon, and life on earth will feel like an evening, or at most, the time from daybreak until noon. Chapter 80 He frowned. I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. While Muhammad was preaching to Qurayshi disbelievers, the blind man Ibn Sharih came but Muhammad turned away and frowned when this Muslim man called out his name. Muhammad's hope was to make those notable Meccans embrace the religion of Islam, but Muhammad, for all you know, you could have raised the spirits of your brother, the blind man. You could have given him benefit. He blindly searched for you to listen to what you say, and you ignored him for the self-satisfied ones. You turned your attention their way. You were only sent to share, so do not be concerned with whether or not they accept this faith, but from eager ones in search of truth, never turn your face. No, indeed, never turn from the believers to those ignorant of your Lord. This Qur'an is the best of lessons, and those who wish to learn it will be taught. It is written on honoured pages. It is pure, written by heaven's scribes, offering mankind divine knowledge on how to live their lives. So woe to men like Abu Lahab, the ungrateful, the ignorant sycophant. Was he not created from something tiny, yet he forgets and becomes arrogant? Man was a drop of sperm, then proportioned and then released from the womb, to life, then to death and on to the next life he will go through. Yet the disbelievers doubt this and do not follow their Lord's decrees. They should consider the development and growth of their food from the land that they eat. We pour down the water, which we cause the soil to absorb, and from that grow all kinds of food that you and your animals adore. And even if the disbelievers ignore this, know there will come a day when they believe, the day with the deafening blast, the day when from his family every man will turn and flee. As the family members will come to him begging, Oh, so-and-so, from your good deeds give me a share. And he will respond, no, in this place, it is just myself of who I will take care. And even the Prophet's families will come to them in desperate search of aid. But Abraham's father, Adam's son, and Lot's wife will all be turned away. On that day, some faces will show signs of rejoicing true believers. But on knowing that God's promises were true, others will be downcast. Such is the fate of the liars and deceivers. Chapter 81 Shrouded in Darkness I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. When there is no more sunlight by day, 
and all the stars are extinguished from the night, and when valuable camels are abandoned with not a single shepherd in sight, and when the mountains are turned to dust along with every other creature, and the seas become like molten lava and fresh and salt water no longer feature, and when the souls are sorted with their partner, those who failed and the high achievers, the low will find a hell-bound devil by their side, but a guide from heaven joins the believers. On that day, the girl buried alive will ask, what crime did I commit? Her guilty slayer will suffer the burning consequence, his chance of heaven forfeit. And when people's records fly from their hands and reveal themselves so clear, and the sky is stripped from its place, and the believers see heaven brought near. And when the hellfire is then ignited, a sight at which every soul will stare, and all they have done will be accounted for in the book of deeds that meets them there. I swear by the movement of the planets, and by the pace the night and the morning come, this Qur'an is passed to the Prophet by the angel Gabriel, the obedient, trustworthy one. He is strong and held in honour by the Supreme Lord of the Throne, and Muhammad only reveals what was sent to him, making God's scripture known. Truly this Qur'an is from God, not the word of an evil jinn. So Muhammad is not mad, he indeed saw Gabriel on the wide horizon. So why do you people turn away from the Qur'an? This is a message for everyone who wishes to follow the straight path, but only through God's will can this be done. Chapter 82 Bursting Apart I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. On the day the sky is torn, and the stars are suddenly scattered, when the seas boil over, and every tomb lays in tatters, when the graves are turned inside out, and every soul in sight will be reminded of its every deed, what it did wrong and what it did right. So mankind, with this in mind, why do you from God turn away, the generous one who proportioned and fashioned you in the best of shapes? Yet you ignore this mercy and believe the judgment day to be a lie, so beware the angels and their recording pens who on your shoulders reside. Those who have good deeds recorded will meet judgment day with no concern, but those whose record reeks of evil will head to the fire with no return. So beware the coming time of judgment when all your choices over your actions are taken away, as all judgment, control and command will be solely God's that day. Chapter 83 The Fraudulent Ones I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Severe punishment will come to those who give short measure and rip off others, who demand to get their full rights in dealings, but do not do the same for their brothers. Punishment too will await those who give short change in other ways, being negligent in their fast and charity, and being heedless of the way that they pray. Do they not believe they'll be judged on this with all the others when raised on the day, a day when they stand before their Lord, to face their crimes that they can't escape. A list of these wicked ones is called Sijin, kept with the devils where they reside, a numbered list of doubters of Judgment Day, for whom heaven will be denied. Such people are evil aggressors. They call the Qur'an ancient stories. Their hearts are hardened by their deeds, and they will never come close to seeing God's glory. They will be taken to hell in utter regret and fearful, their eyes spread wide, and be reminded as they are left to burn, this is the place you deemed a lie. But inscribed in a precious green gem tablet is the list of the righteous, Eliyin, a permanent record, clearly written, which the angels of heaven have seen. Those named on it will sip pure wine and have heavenly springs forever in radiant bliss, ever perfect and ever splendid, so let those who strive strive hard for this. They will sit and remember the disbelievers like Abu Jahl and those similar to him who used to scorn my beloved believers and pass by them with sarcastic grins. And they would wink mockingly to each other when the believers would walk on by and then head to their people and insult them more, saying they believe in misguided lies. 
But in heaven, its inhabitants will sit on couches, and they will laugh and discuss how the tables have truly turned, how they have heaven, and Abu Jahl and those like him have hell, each received what their deeds have earned. Chapter 84 Splitting Open I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. When the sky is split and torn apart, at its creator's command, and the graves toss out all they contain, and the earth becomes one level path. Mankind will end its toiling, and be brought from death to be judged by its Lord, and on that day they'll be given a full written account of all the deeds that they've stored. Those who believed like Abu Salma will be given their records in their right hands indeed, and be pleased with what their Lord decrees, and head for paradise overjoyed and happy. But his brother Al-Aswad will find, from behind his book of deeds will be given to him, he and his kind will join the dwellers of hell, forever regretting their life's decisions. God watch those like him live their lives by their own desires, not believing he would return to his Lord as he doubted the garden and fire. So I swear by the light of the sunset that gives way to the darkness of night and the way that the darkness is eventually pierced by the full moon's reflected light. Mankind too will go through stages, life, death and the resurrection. So why don't they believe and heed this Quran, prostrate and ask for God's protection? But the disbelievers will reject this Quran and some of them are hypocrites pretending to believe in what you've brought, but they secretly make fun of it. So warn the disbelievers again of the fire that will come at them from every side and remind believers of the luxurious gardens, ever pleasant, spacious and wide. 85. The Constellations I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. I swear by the sky, the constellations, and the day of judgment that will come, and by my prophet and all mankind, and by the Friday that that day will fall on. Those who tortured believers in trenches they dug and filled with fire will be damned for sitting and watching their pain when my servant's only desire was to serve God, the praiseworthy, the true controller of all you know. He'll send those who torment believers to hell if they don't repent in sorrow. But those who stay firm in faith, those whose belief gives birth to good deeds, will be the ones who have the best of rewards, gardens filled with flowing streams. Those who will be punished will be punished in the worst of ways by the Lord who is the giver of life and the one who also takes life away. Know he will show love and mercy, though, to those who leave their sins and turn to Islam. The Lord of the throne will do whatever he wills on the day the universe and beyond will be in his right hand. So remind the Quraysh of the end of other sinners, such as Pharaoh and Thamud indeed, even though it will make little difference with them, they will not repent and believe. God knows all they think and conceal. They too have nothing to protect against him. The disbelievers will have hell and the righteous a place in heaven. Chapter 86 The Morning Star I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. I swear by the heavens and the bright morning star, by the constellations I created and the arrangements in which they are. Your uncle Abu Talib's shoulders have watchers recording all that is done. Before he chooses not to believe, he should reflect on what he was created from. He entered this world through the sperm of a man and a woman's womb, God created this birth for this life and another birth plan for the next life too. He will be brought back to life on the day when his watcher will reveal all he did and no one will be able to help him, not even the Qureshi women that he was so concerned with. He worried of what they would think if he embraced Islam, so he will be raised in the next life as a disbelieving man. I swear by the falling rain and by all the resulting green growth, this is a decisive warning to the disbelievers and not an idle boast. I know they scheme to kill you, Muhammad, but I have already determined their fate. Let them plot. They will die at the Battle of Badr, their final resting place. Chapter 87 
the Most High. I take refuge from the devil, the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Prophet, give praise to your Lord, the Most High, who gave each creature a perfectly fashioned guise and guided its steps, determined its abilities, who makes plants grow and wither without any difficulty. And with the same ease, he'll make you memorize the Quran whole. So do not make trying to remember Gabriel's lessons such a worrying goal. God knows you try to recite louder, to remember, and your secret fear of forgetting it, as he knows everything people reveal and conceal, and whatever good the faithful do brings benefit. God will help you to share this warning, and those conscious of God will take heed, but the rebellious ones will turn away and enter into hell forever indeed. Those aware of God will purify themselves and often remember and praise their Lord, yet there are many amongst men who believe only the life on earth is to be adored. They disregard the hereafter's value, even though it alone is worth trying to reach, and we revealed this before to Abraham and Moses in the scriptures that they used to teach. Chapter 88 The Overwhelming Event I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Have you, prophet, been told of the overwhelming event on a day when many are humiliated, exhausted, doubled over and bent, preparing to enter hell, which offers the most hideous menu, boiling water will be their drink, and thorny cacti will be their food. There will be no nourishment in either, or hunger relief, an ample reward for those who persisted in disbelief. But there will be other faces too, overjoyed and bright, knowing their belief and deeds have brought the garden in sight. There they will hear no ill words and have utter comfort all around. Fine carpets and cushions and couches and a pure spring will be found. So implore the disbelievers that ask for signs to look at the heavens and ponder, the rain clouds and mountains, the earth's shape and other wonders. Remind them, give warning, you are not there to control. Those who ignore you and doubt only damage their own soul. And those who ignore your call to go and strive and fight in God's way will be the ones for whom the greatest punishment is saved. Eventually they will answer to me, they will all be held to account, and on that day they will see that this warning is true. This is the day of which there is no doubt. Chapter 89 Daybreak I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. By the break of day and its morning light, by the fading darkness and dhul hajjas ten sacred nights, and by the odd and the even, the creator and creation, is such an oath from God not strong enough for any rational person? Prophet, have you considered how we dealt with the people of Ad, who lived in Iram and created great pillars, truly unique in all the land, and the people of Thamud who carved their homes in the rock, and the fall of mighty Pharaoh, will the disbelievers not reflect and take stock? All of them committed grave corruption in their lands, but your Lord was watching all they did and destroyed their tyrannous plans. Disbelieving men think, when they have wealth and such, God has honoured me, but when they have provision taken away, they conclude, God has humiliated me unjustly. These Meccans have such thoughts. When they see the poor they do not feed, they do not help the ones in need. They consume others' inheritance with selfish greed and have a deep, crippling love for wealth indeed. But they will see. They will see. On the day the earth is pounded to dust and collapsed, they will then want to take heed, but the opportunity to do so will have lapsed. When God's judgment comes before them as the angels arrange into rows, dragging with them hell, the disbelievers' reward for the acts that they chose. They will then fret endlessly, saying, If only I'd prepared for my time in the hereafter indeed, as none can punish as God does, they'll be sent to the fire to burn endlessly. But the soul of the believer, with whom God is well pleased, will go to the garden with my servants, on account of their belief and good deeds. Chapter 90 The City I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. 
I swear by the city of Mecca, and by the fact you dwell in it, and by your forefather Adam, and all that followed in his lineage. We created man to struggle and to strive. Ya Abdul Ashad of the Quraysh thinks no one has power over him in this life. Muhammad, he boasts of what he has spent on gathering people against you, boasting to ones who had already seen all of the evil things he tried to do. And God has seen too, and for all his efforts to block my messenger, rotting in hell will be his due. Have men like him not been given eyes to see, and a tongue and lips to talk, and been told through scripture's guidance of the two paths to walk, one path leading to evil and the most terrible of states, and the other that leads to heaven for those who sincerely prostrate. Yet few attempt the harder path. What is along the steps of the harder path? The freeing of slaves, feeding the hungry, and being steadfast, being compassionate and forgiving misdeeds of the past. On the day of gathering, those who strove in this way will be gathered on the right, but the disbelievers will be on the left, with the fire they are about to enter, filling their sight. Chapter 91 The Sun I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. I swear by the sun and the moon that succeeds it, and by the day that lets it shine, and the night that conceals it, and by the sky that I built, and the earth I spread wide, and the souls that I formed with each soul's intention deep inside. Purifying the soul is the goal of the winner, and corrupting the soul is the end result for the sinner. Take note of the people of Thamud, to whom Prophet Saleh was sent. They mocked him and reviled him when he warned of the punishment. And they worshipped idols from which they received no gain, and challenged Saleh to pray to me to see if his prayers too would be in vain. And I immediately sent a she-camel, as was his people's request, and this was a sign for those who need such proof that faith in me is best. Yet even then, only few believed, and others called it sorcery. So Saleh said, This is God's camel, let her drink a day if thirsty. But still they did not listen, and their most wicked man, Qudar, proceeded to cripple the camel and kill it, doing as his tribesmen told him to do. And their true lord destroyed them for this crime, he did not hesitate. So learn the lesson from previous generations. Your Lord's retribution is great. Chapter 92 The Night I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. I swear by the night that covers all, after it has been illuminated by the day, and by the male and female creatures that I created and shaped. Mankind takes one of two paths that differ greatly indeed, there is one encouraging righteousness, and we help him towards heaven's ease. But there is one who is stingy, corrupts the truth, follows other gods and his own desires. He will be the one we help find his place deep within the fire. And all he stored in his life on earth will be of no use to him, but in hell he'll see it all again, and it will be used to brand his skin. I always provide sustenance for man to arrive at an end that is best, for I am the creator of all you know, in this life and the next. So I warn you against the fire and the deeds that will replace their urn with polytheists who ignore this message, where their skin will endlessly burn. And the garden will be filled with the righteous, the pious and the generous ones, whose pure God-fearing hearts encourage them to give what they can of their funds. Like the truthful Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, who paid to free Bilal the slave, he did this for God, not to return a favour, regardless of what the ignorant say. And for this act he will be rewarded with that with which he is well pleased, and the same is true for all my believing servants. They will head to the garden and ease. Chapter 93 The Morning Brightness I swear by the morning brightness and the stillness of the night, your Lord has not forsaken you, prophet, and your future will be bright. We have not sent revelation for days, but we have our reason for this. The disbelievers say it is because you have angered me, but their fabrications are to be dismissed. Muhammad, were you not an orphan to whom I gave shelter, 
Were you not lost until I made you see? Did I not find you deep in desperate need and make you grow sufficiently? So be gentle with the orphans, listen to the needy's request, and talk of the blessings of your Lord. True faith in him is best. 94. Relief Did we not relieve your heart, Muhammad, when we gave you prophethood? Remove the doubts and fears you had, made things clear so you understood. Did we not raise your reputation, make you known throughout the land, so even those who wish you dead knew you as a just and honest man? So no, every time you have hardship, it will be followed by ease. So strive to new tasks and challenges and turn to God for all your needs. Chapter 95. The Fig I swear by the fig and the olive, and by the mountain where Moses was spoken to by me, and we also swear by Mecca, your sacred city. We created man, upright and standing, in the finest of states, but many of them will dwindle to the most abject of fates. Except the true believers who excel in good deeds, theirs will be the gardens and eternity of ease. So if you know now how you were created, why do you deny that you will be returned to the judge at the appointed time after you die? 96. The Clot I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Read in the name of your Lord, the one who created, created mankind from a clot of sperm and shaped it. Your Lord is the generous one who taught via the pen and chose to shed light on what was unknown to men. But man becomes arrogant, thinks he'll self-sustain, acting as if he won't be returned to God again. Muhammad, Abu Lahab has threatened you, forbidden you to head to the Kaaba to pray. Do you see him as rightly guided, or is he truly astray? He claims he will stomp on your neck, an arrogant boast. Ignore his threats, head to the Kaaba, pray there and draw close. Let him call on his kinsmen to help him, or any others as well, and in return we shall summon the guardians of hell. And when he saw you praying by the house, he turned to do as he'd said, but within a few moments he was fleeing, with his hands over his head. And when asked, O oh Abu Lahab, why have you turned in fear and run away? He replied, I cannot get to Muhammad, there is a trench of fire filled with demons blocking my way. 97. The Night of Glory Muhammad, the night of glory is when the Qur'an was first sent to you, a night when the angels joined the gatherings in mosques and Gabriel is in attendance too, a night worth a thousand months of worship, a night to truly adore. Its blessings last all through the night until the break of dawn. Chapter 98. The Clear Evidence the disbelievers before your time had no intention of leaving their idols or false gods, even though they were deceiving them. Until we sent down clear evidence, a messenger and blessed words of this scripture to be treated with ritual reverence. The generations before of the Christians and Jews were given clear evidence too, but they used it to try and refute each other and confuse the issues. They were told, the ones who give alms and pray, Devoting their lives to the Lord will surely be best, but they quarrelled and fought and added to our commands and split themselves into 71 sects. Thus the disbelievers prepare themselves a return to the place where all they will feel is what it is like for their skin to burn. And they will never leave that station. This is their punishment for proving themselves to be the worst of creation. whereas the best of creation are those who believe and do good deeds. They will be rewarded with bliss in gardens with flowing streams. They are the ones in awe of God and the ones with whom God is well pleased. Chapter 99. The Earthquake When the earth shakes on the day of reckoning and the graves send out their contents into Judgment Day's great gathering, all mankind will cry, what is happening here? and at the sights they will see, they will tremble in fear. 
as God will command the earth to reveal every action they've done through all of their lives, every single one. People will be split into three groups and then they will see every atom worth of action they did transformed into good and bad deeds. Chapter 100. The Charging Steeds I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. I swear by the charging steeds that you value so dearly, that raise clouds of dust while making dawn raids when you strike down the enemy. Man is ungrateful to his lord, excessive in his love of wealth, both in how much he seeks it and how he hoards it to himself. Doesn't he know there are no secrets from God? On judgment day they will all be laid bare, and all mankind will answer to the one who is all aware. Chapter 101. The Crashing Blow Judgment day will come like a crashing blow, and mankind will scatter looking for cover, terrified of all that's on show. The mountains will drift like woolen tufts, and the ground will tremble, splitting its crust. There will be no fear for the righteous, their heavy scales bring delight, but there will be no such peace for those whose scales of good deeds are light. They'll be tossed headfirst into the fire, the most terrible of homes, but those with good deeds will have heaven's gardens to roam. Sinners will see how their tiny sins accrue, and the righteous will see their small deeds have brought virtue. Chapter 102. Striving for Worldly Wealth You strive for worldly wealth, and only death will quench that thirst, but you will come to know that striving for good deeds should have come first. Because that flawed life you chose will only make you fuel for the fire, and there in the depths of hell you will utterly regret your worldly desire. Chapter 103. The Declining Day I swear by the declining of the day and the passing of time, mankind will be lost except the believers in these words of mine. Those who urge others to truth, and do good deeds, and who remain steadfast, no matter their need. Chapter 104. The Backbiter Woe to the one who belittles others, and the one who backbites. The one who counts his wealth and dreams, it will make him live forever, ignoring what is right. No, he'll be thrown into hell to be crushed, where God's fire will rush through his skin, engulfing his heart, and he will see hell's looming gates locked with no way to depart. Chapter 105. The Elephant Prophet, your Lord brought about the elephant army's demise, confounding all of their schemes right before their eyes. He sent waves of birds against them, throwing pellets from the sky, and every man hit would wither like a failed crop and die. Chapter 106. The Quraysh. God destroyed the army of the elephant for the Quraysh to feel safe as they made the summer and winter trading journeys, travelling from place to place. So let them be grateful and worship the Kaaba's Lord. It is he who provides safety from fear and food to be stored. Chapter 107. Common Kindness. Prophet. Have you seen the actions of the ones who deny the judgment will come? They ignore the plight of the orphans and restrain themselves and others from feeding the needy ones. So woe to those who pray only for show, praying without remembrance, forbidding the common kindness, and losing out on the reward that such actions would sow. Chapter 108. Abundance. We have blessed you with plenty, and you'll have a river in heaven by that name. So give praise to your Lord, and to him sacrifice the meat of your game. And ignore the one who mocks you, there is no truth in his claim. You will always be remembered, while he will be forgotten, and in hell he will suffer again. Chapter 109. The Disbelievers Tell the disbelievers, I will never worship what you worship in God's place, and you will never turn and commit to the search for his face and I will never turn to your way and agree with your false gods and lies. You have your way of life and religion, 
and I have mine. Chapter 110. The Help When God's help comes and the opening is clear, when many turn to God's faith with their hearts sincere, ask forgiveness and exclaim the Lord's praise. He's always ready to accept those who turn from their evil ways. 111. The Thorn-Studded Rope Abu Lahab's hands will be destroyed and so will he. Nothing he has in wealth will make what's to come easy. He and his thorn-throwing wife will be in the fire filled with regret. And for all the hate she aims at you, she will be rewarded with a thorn-studded rope wrapped around her neck. Chapter 112. Purity of Faith Tell all, he is God, the one and only, the eternal, not fathered without progeny, and nothing compares to him in the heavens and earth, not even remotely. Chapter 113. Daybreak Tell all, I seek safety with the Lord of the sunrise, against the evil he's created, and the evil at night after dark lies and from the witch's spells and the envier's ills, and for those who follow an evil path and all of their allies. Chapter 114. Mankind. Tell all, I seek safety with the Lord and Master of people, against every conniving whisperer and their evil, those of jinn and men who whisper into the hearts of others and lure them into actions 